Can we have question from mic one, please? Uh, good evening, doctor. Uh, my name is Chong Nin. I'm a student uh, from IUKL. So I have two questions actually, but I'll ask the second one if the organizer permits later. So my first question is, okay, uh, just now in your talk earlier, you were talking about uh, brotherhood uni unity. So it sounds like a potential solution for religious harmony between uh, the many major faiths in this world. So the, big, the uh, biggest problem I, I think about is like uh, Christianity, there are many different sects, different religious, uh, I mean different, uh, different uh, sections, different interpretations by preachers and humans. So based on this human factor that tends to misinterpret a religion, uh, derivating from the main uh, text, the main content of a religion, what is your solution or your response to this uh, problem or to this biggest obstacle to brotherhood unity? But that's a good question that we find in some religion, and I give the example of Christianity, that people interpret the scripture differently, therefore you have different sects, etc. And that's what brings diversity, so what's the solution? Whether the solution is that you go back to the scripture, and if the interpretation differs, and by the different interpretation, if there's a contradiction, then you choose that interpretation which there's no contradiction. For example, you just heard the earlier brother, when he asked that, why can't a man from Ali Kitab marry? And everyone agrees that you can marry from women from Ali Kitab. So I gave my reasoning that if I believe that you can marry any Ali Kitab, Mary, Sheila, so there will be a contradiction in the Quran. Because one verse of the Quran says you cannot marry a mushrika. And people who worship Jesus can peace be upon him are doing shirk. That's what the Quran says. So I come up with an answer in which there is no contradiction. So any logical person who hears both the answers will agree with my answer more or any answer in which there is no contradiction. Same with the earlier person who says, I believe Jesus is son of God. So if you believe Jesus, peace be upon him, is son of God, Adam is son of God, Ephraim is son of God, Israel is son of God. Do you give the same status as Jesus? He says no. So people say something but they don't mean it. So when there is a difference in interpretation, I say, then why do you give so much respect to Jesus and not to the other prophets? What they are saying actually begotten son. And when they say begotten, I say that word has been removed from the Bible. So when you study, when you do an analytical study, analogical study, you come to the truth. As Jesus Christ, peace be upon in the Bible, seek the truth and truth shall fill you, gospel of John. So when you're doing research, you easily come to know which is the correct one. But if you follow blindly the church or a particular scholar, blindly without checking right or wrong, then you come into a problem. So that's the reason when you read a commentary of any scripture, what you have to see how logical it is and how well it is connected. And you have to take the scripture as a whole, not only one verse out of context. If you take one verse out of context and interpret it, you have to take the scripture as a whole. So when you take as a whole, and that commentary which fulfills the requirement is the correct one. So this has to be done with study, brother. And then you realize that which is the correct translation and interpretation of the scripture. Hope that answers the question. Thank you. Do you have any other question? You said you had two questions. Yes, but then if the organizer okay. has enough time? No, because okay. you allowed the others, I would give the same thing to you, brother. Okay, so this is just a short question. So, so early on you were talking about uh, Muslim sh uh, should not pray towards an idol or object or anything uh, because God is formless and He is beyond our comprehension. So, from my understanding, from just m uh, what I've observed, it, I probably believe it's wrong, but when the Muslims perform their pilgrimage at Mecca, the direction of prayers are facing towards a stone pillar in the center. So what is, uh, isn't this contradicting to what? Very good question. The brother asked a very good question that if Islam is against idol worship, I did not say God is formless, I said God is imageless. There's a difference between formless and imageless. If you interpret your way, there'll be a big, big blunder. I said God is imageless, I never said God is formless. There's a difference between formless and imageless. Coming to your main question, that if Islam is against idol worship, when you go to pilgrimage and you bow down towards the Kaaba, isn't it same as idol worship? And this is there in my book, The Most Common Question. It is number nine. The ninth most common question asked by non-Muslims about Islam is, if Islam is against idol worship, why do you bow down to the Kaaba when you pray? 
And the answer is, no Muslim ever worships the Kaaba. The Kaaba is our Qibla, it's the direction. Because we Muslims believe in unity. For example, today all the Muslims want to offer Salah, want to pray here. Some may say, let's face north, some will say south, some will say east, some will say west. There will be disunity. So for unity, wherever you are, you face towards the Kaaba. This is the verse of the Quran of Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse 144, which says that when you pray, face towards the Kaaba. So Kaaba is the Qibla, it is not we worship it. Furthermore, Muslims were the first people who drew the world map. And al udrisi in 1154 was the first human being who drew the world map. When the Muslims drew the world map, South Pole was on top, North Pole down, Kaaba was in the center. The Western cartographers came and they turned the map upside down. North Pole top, South Pole down, yet Kaaba is in the center. So if you stay in the north, you face towards the south. If you stay in the south, you face towards the north. If you stay in the west, you face towards the east. If you stay in the east, you face towards the west. Kaaba is the center of the world. When people go for Umrah, when Muslims go for Umrah, or we go for Hajj, we circumambulate around the Kaaba. What is the reason we circumambulate? Because it's the commandment of Almighty God. But logically what I can think, that every circle has got one center. When we circumambulate around the Kaaba, we are testifying that there's only one God. And the statement of the second Khalifa of Islam, Hazrat Umar, he said it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 2, in the book of Hajj, chapter number 56, hadith number 675, Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, the second Caliph of Islam, he said that this black stone can neither benefit me, can neither harm me. I'm kissing it only because I've seen the Prophet kiss it. This statement that the black stone can neither benefit me or neither harm me is sufficient to prove that Muslims don't worship the Kaaba. And lastly, at the time of the Prophet, there were Sahaba who stood on the Kaaba and gave the Azan. No idol worshipper will ever stand on the idol he or she worships. So this proves that no Muslim ever worships the Kaaba. The Kaaba is the Qibla, it's only a direction. Hope that answers the question. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Gives incentives to his helpers from the jinni. Whoever does the best job today in misguiding Muslims, I will place the crown with my own hands on your head. Disperse. Then the jinn would disperse to do their mischief. The shaitan, he sits with his shayateen, they're giving him reports.